Hey guys, this is SRC Reptiles, and today I'm making a special video for one of my watchers, or I will say he probably watches my channel a little bit. So there's a lady I work with who has a son, his name is Kingston, and this video is for him. But all of you are obviously in invited to enjoy it as well. Just a preview of some of my favorite reptiles that I have, or some that are just really stunning, very friendly, really cool, stuff like that. So. This here is my bearded dragon. This is Lily. As you can see, she's huge. She's about the same length as my arm. Just to kind of give you an idea, let me see if I might be able to stretch her out to where you can actually see just how long she is. She's at the very tip of my finger and it goes all the way, her tail does, to like my elbow area. So Lily is quite big. We've had her for about two years now. And she was probably between six months or so when we got her from the people that were keeping her. She previously had been fed only lettuce and crickets. So that is not a proper diet for bearded dragons. So she really enjoys a diet now of kale, collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens. Uh, and then for her vegetables that she gets every so often, she really likes squash, uh, yellow squash, zucchini, ones like that. She really enjoys acorn squash, though that is more of a treat. Butternut squash also she really enjoys. Um, she loves sweet potatoes, uh, different stuff like that. So that there is Lily, and as you can see, she's starting to kind of turn yellow. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a best way to explain this. So when she's basking under her UVB, her skin turns really dark to take in all of those uh, rays coming from there, giving her vitamin D3. So when she's not basking, she goes back to her usual color, which is just a yellow. A yellow with a little bit of like a brownish orange. So here's Lily up close. And she has some really pretty, <laughs> she's looking at herself. She has some really pretty dark patches on her shoulder pads, which I'm gonna try to see if I can show them to you. Nah, she's being a little picky. But uh, when she flares her beard out, when she gets scared by whatever might scare her, which usually is like, I'm not going to show her, but this fake lizard right here, this scares her, which I'm not going to show her because I don't want her to get scared. But, uh, so she's a leather back is what it's called. That there's Lily. I don't want to take too much time since we've got a whole bunch of others to see. But again, here's my bearded dragon. Okay, so next up, we have my only gargoyle gecko, and this here is Vesper. She doesn't get handled as often as some of my others because she just doesn't really care to be handled. <laughs> As you can see, she really enjoys jumping. So I'll give you a close-up. She has some really pretty orangey-brown stripes. And whoop, come back over here. Her eyes are a very pretty silvery blue color. She's got bone... <laughs> she has bone protrusions on her head that give her the name Gargoyle. They're right here. She's getting herself all worked up, I tell you. This is one of the reasons that she doesn't get handled too often, is she just does not like it. So we'll make this fast. So <laughs> if only you could see the cartwheels that she's doing on the way down. It, you'd think that she would learn of all the other times. So I'm going to hold on to her tail a little bit so she can't jump out of my hand. So gargoyle geckos can actually regrow their tails if they drop them, which is really cool. Crested geckos, which I also have. Uh, cannot regrow their tails. So once they drop their tail, they're gone. So I'll show you a couple just so you can see one with tail, one without a tail, just so you can see what they look like. Vesper uh, came to me when she was two months old. She was severely dehydrated and constipated, and she weighed about five grams. And at two months old, that is really big. Um, after I was able to give her a little bit of pumpkin, that actually got all of her bowels moving, and she went down to two grams. <laughs> so... She had a lot of weight there that was just poop that was backed up into her. I also gave her a lot more water. We bumped up the uh, calcium and vitamins for a little bit, but now she's just on a regular diet because obviously she is pretty much an adult now. I want to say she's three years old, but uh, I would not say a gargoyle would be the gecko I would start with. I would definitely start with a crested gecko if you're wanting to get into geckos from New Caledonia or New Caledonia. <laughs> I would definitely not suggest a gargoyle for your first one. They usually just do not like to be handled very much. So that there's Vesper. I'm going to go ahead and put her away now just because she's getting really stressed out. So this here is Nyx, and he is two years old. I was looking to see, and he was born on the 25th. 
So he's technically not quite two yet, but he will be two years old on the 25th. So this is one of the geckos I actually produced. He's a crested gecko, and he is an extreme tricolor. So usually a tricolor is an animal that's got even parts of cream and white, or, well, even parts cream or white to orange or brown. So you can see here he's got a really good amount. And usually what makes him an extreme is the pattern usually on most geckos will stop at about this point but if it travels anywhere up the mid dorsal to the top that makes him an extreme because it covers a huge amount of his body so this is what he looks like and I'll try to show you his back because it's really pretty and he's got what's called frosted tips so that's because all of his tips of his crest here is white so that's what's called the frosted tip he is a male as you can see <laughs> he's got the uh, necessary equipment there to be a boy and he does have his tail their tails are prehensile so you can see that he kind of can grip my finger with his tail that's one thing that kind of sucks when they do drop their tails they lose that agility to be able to grip stuff <laughs> he also doesn't get held very often because he's really crazy so I'm gonna go ahead and put him up but I will show you the gecko that is in the other tank over here so I'll move the phone this one was a rescue and his name is oddball and Oddball came to me with a condition called metabolic bone disease, which is when their bones become rubber and they can't walk around at all, which he had not got to that point yet. But because of having metabolic bone disease when he was younger, it has stunted the growth of his arms, so they do kind of look a little chubby, which I know that to you guys, they might look normal, but when I'm looking at them, like his hind legs, they look good. That's a good size right there, but his front leg is just kind of on the smaller side. So he is a bicolor Dalmatian. So bicolor means that the side of the body is a different color from the back. So you can see the back here is a pretty tan color. And the side of him is kind of a peachy coral. He has black and red spots. And he is a really pretty boy. I really do like Oddball. I got him when he was probably around a year old, I'd want to say. And he was hanging out at the bottom of the tank. He just was not active at all. His ribs were all caved in. His neck was all scrunched up like it was bad. But over a year and a half later, I have gotten him to looking so healthy. He pretty much behaves just like any other gecko. And I'm so proud of myself for sticking to it because I was really scared that he wasn't going to make it. Like it was a pretty bad case. Um, I did make videos in the past, but it just didn't really show the magnitude of how concerning his condition was and the sad part was the woman didn't even realize that he had that and she was just feeding a food diet that was from the pet store that was not one that had the correct nutrients in it which i'll try to show you a little bit of his spots he's really pretty the amount of spots he's got and i'll try to show you his belly he's pretty good to be handled but you can see he's even got little spots on his belly i'm going to go ahead and put him up my phone just fell on the floor <laughs> and uh, we'll move on to the next animal again this is oddball Okay guys, so this here is Atlas, and she is my painted turtle, and she right now thinks she is swimming. <laughs> so she has gotten quite large, as you can see. <laughs> She's splashing water on my face. Hey, Atlas, look. Look. Hey, that's you. <laughs> She's like, I do not care. We'll make this fast. So this is what Atlas looks like. She's a very large-sized turtle. She's got a really pretty belly. I'm going to go ahead and grab the towel here because I don't know if she's trying to pee or not. Um, anyway, this is what Atlas looks like. We found her when she was itty bitty. She had a wound on her, uh, her shell or her carapace or whatever it is called. Um, she's a painted turtle, like I said. She's not quite even a year old yet and she's huge. She's actually going to be getting an upgrade to a 100 gallon tank soon. She's in a 20 gallon currently. I'm going to go ahead and put her back and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about her. I just don't want to stress her out too much. Oh, she is calming down a little. So, anyway, with Atlas. <laughs> This is what she looks like. She's very pretty. She's shedding her scoops right now. But anyway, like I said, I want to put her back real quick. So before I grab the next animal and I'm putting some hand sanitizer on my skin, um, with Atlas, we found her on a golf course. There was no water anywhere close to her. There was water, but it was probably a good mile from where we were located. It was not close. Um, she was super dehydrated looking. Her eyes were all sunken. She was really dirty, um, which makes sense because, you know, they hatch from the ground so she was covered in dirt but that dirt had dried on her um, her eyes were like I said sunken in she had a wound on her shell which luckily as she has shedded her scoops has healed 
so that's obviously a really good sign but uh, and I do think she is a female so with painted turtles they get about seven to nine inches uh, full grown nine inches being on the rare bigger end but they can get that large like I said she's gonna be getting a hundred gallon tank uh, probably around Christmas time if I had to give a fair estimate I just recently got the pump and the filter in the mail so still kind of getting everything before I actually buy the tank itself or the horse trough is what it is is a huge big thick black plastic horse trough so we're going to be using that for her anyway let's move on to the next animal okay so this here is Raja and he is my seven-year-old corn snake and he's quite a big boy as you can see now I'm not going to handle him too long because he did eat about three days ago and I usually like to give him a little bit of time maybe about four to five days to settle before I go handling him so I'm not really going to move him much whatever kind of moving he does is on his own terms but uh, Raja here, like I said, he's seven. I got him when he was probably about six inches long. He's now four feet. Um, he has a really pretty black and white speckle that goes to an orange and black speckled belly. He is a really good snake, actually. I really enjoy having Raja. He used to go on a lot of feeding strikes when he was younger, but luckily as he's gotten older, he has not given me a lot of eating problems. He now eats, I want to say a small rat is probably the size of rat that he gets. He does eat frozen thawed, he does not eat live. I don't really see it very humane to feed live to uh, a snake, especially because the mice or rats don't have anywhere to escape to. And the snake, if it's not hungry, the rodents actually can harm the snake. They even can kill the snake. So it's just not worth messing with trying to feed live, in my personal opinion. Also, you have to have somewhere to keep them when they are not being fed off yet. and. I just am not really that interested in keeping rodents. I don't hate rodents. I had gerbils and mice when I was younger and up into adulthood. I've had mice recently. But um, I just don't uh, really care for... Oh, sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to smack your head. I just don't really care for feeding live. I just... I, that's just personal preference. But anyway, here's Raja up close <laughs> licking at the uh, camera. <laughs> so snakes are pretty much all muscle. They uh, have a really neat jaw that allows them to, they've got a lot of jaw muscles that kind of are like a hinge. So when they go to eat, that kind of hinge opens up. And they used to think that snakes like dislocated their jaw or some weird shit like that. They do not. So yeah, they, they don't dislocate their jaw when they eat. <laughs> or at least these guys don't, that's for sure. That would be extremely painful. <laughs> it's just, it's just not. But anyway, like I said, I'm not going to hold Raja too terribly long. This is him, and his name means king in Hindi, and he definitely acts like a king because he has to have his rodents warmed up to at least 95 degrees. Now, usually you can probably be fine if you shoot for 91, that's probably okay, but 95, that's like the good spot, and if it's warmer than that, that's even better. <laughs> so he's a little picky. He definitely acts like he is royalty, that's for sure. See if we can get the camera to focus on his face. He's pretty cool looking. So anyway... That there is Raja, and we'll move on to a couple of other animals, and then we'll call it good. Okay, guys, so this here is Ember. A lot of you who've watched the channel for a long time already know who Ember is, but Ember was my very first crested gecko, very first reptile, in fact, that I ever got. She is nine years old this year, and she is ten inches long, because her tail by itself is like four and a half, five inches. Her tail is extremely long. Her body itself is pretty decent because I measured her body one time and it was like five and a half, six inches, something like that. So her tail might be more like four inches long. Either way, she's a very big girl. And uh, Ember, there's not really a lot of crazy genetics going on. She just came from a pet store. One of the very few animals I have from a pet store. A lot of my animals I have bought from breeders or bred myself. So Ember is just a regular old Harlequin, but she has a really pretty olive green color that when she's completely fired down she looks like this olive green and it's really unique so she's probably my most well behaved because she's my oldest I have two others that are nine but I didn't acquire them till they were at least a year old or two so I haven't had them as long as her I got her when she was like three or four months old she was itty bitty so no one could have ever prepared me for me having this huge 10 inch long gecko she's just massive in length and uh, again, the prehensile tail. And I guess I still haven't shown you guys what a frog butt looks like. So let me run over real quick 
and grab one of mine that do not have a tail. So this here is Twix, and he is one of my geckos that does not have its tail. So Twix here is an extreme tricolor, and uh, he's a real jerk sometimes, so I'm really hoping he doesn't bite me while I'm holding him. <laughs> but uh, he just is not very nice. This is what he looks like. This is what his dorsal looks like. It's really pretty. So his dorsal is his back. So Twix here lost his tail because Snickers and him were trying to uh, mate, and Snickers wasn't having it, and she bit his tail off. <laughs> So they drop it fairly quickly and it usually heals into like a little nubbin like this. And you just want to keep an eye to make sure when the bone is exposed there that it heals properly and doesn't get infected. Otherwise it heals just fine. Their tail usually will flop around for a little bit to draw predators away from them if they're being preyed upon. He probably smells uh, ember on. <laughs> he smells ember on my hand because he just bit my finger a little. But he's not acting aggressive. But um, I'm not going to hold him for too long because, again, he's the aggressive one I have. But anyway, that's what a male cr Ow, yep, there he goes. Ow, fuck, that hurts. They have really small little teeth, and he bites on really, really hard, as you can see. Um, but I can't pull my hand out because if I do, I'll yank out his little teeth. So, ow, fuck. It really does hurt quite a bit. Okay. Okay, okay, let go. Usually blowing air in their mouth, they don't like, so they'll let go. <laughs> oh, he's trying to get me back again. Let go. <laughs> get in the tank. Okay. <laughs> so this is what he did to my finger. So this is why you don't want to buy an animal that's aggressive, but uh, I did not know that at the time when I bought him. So uh, yeah, he tore up my finger pretty good for a crested gecko. You can see there that the skin's been torn and that's probably going to leave a mark. Looks like a few spots are already kind of bleeding a little. It more just feels like a really painful pinch. Usually you don't end up bleeding from it, but uh, yeah, he's not very nice. <laughs> So anyway, I'll show you one other animal and then we'll call it good because this video is already long enough. And hopefully, Kingston, you found this interesting even though I just got assaulted by my animal. <laughs> so this here is my garden spider and you can see her on her web. And she is in this acrylic container here that's about a foot tall. And I want to say it's probably about eight or ten inches in width. It's pretty wide. It's not very deep. It's probably like six inches deep. But uh, this is her little setup, and you can see she has made her web there. And then she's just got some basic decoration in the bottom there. But she's really cool because when you put insects into her web, she actually will start bouncing and flinging herself around, but then she'll automatically just freeze and she'll stop. And if the insect that's in the web is still in the web, it'll start to wiggle and she immediately will know where it's at. And she'll pounce on it, wrap it in a web, and then she'll eat on it. And when she's done, She'll discard the body down at the bottom of her tank, which I don't currently see. I just fed her last night. Oh, yeah, there it is. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there, the Dubia Roach. Man, my finger's actually hurting really bad. <laughs> I have not been bit that bad by Twix before. Usually he doesn't act that aggressive. Usually he'll bite me once, but he, uh, he held on pretty good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this will conclude the video. This is not all the animals, but... Now that my finger's hurting really bad, I probably need to go put some hydrogen peroxide on that. So, anyway guys, and especially Kingston, I hope that you got to enjoy seeing just a small glimpse of my animals, and also me getting harassed by my gecko. So, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day.